going to do a brief talk about the Nespresso Cities uh, machine in uh, Chrome. Uh, obviously, it's Chrome. Uh, this is the one of many Nespresso original line machines, um, and I figured I would do a brief sort of review. And I've been using this machine for you know a solid week and a half ish, and I I feel like I'm pretty confident in in uh, in using it. So. Just going to show you from the side here. This machine is actually a pretty nice and narrow machine. You can squeeze it sort of anywhere on your counter. Um, I've used Keurigs and I've had uh, a real espresso machine, um, the double boiler uh, version of uh, from oh geez, Breville, the Breville double boiler. So that's I don't know a seven hundred, eight hundred dollar machine. So I have some experience making espresso. Uh, in, a, in a regular espresso machine, I've used the Tassimo, which is a fairly common unit that, uh, you know what, I'm not going to drag it out of the counter. Where the Nespresso, sorry, the um, Tassimo takes uh, cartridges, cups that sort of look like these. This is second cup uh, coffee. So this is what a coffee cartridge looks like. Um, this doesn't actually make coffee. Um, you can make lungos and you can make <coughs> espressos, but to be honest, I just make um, I make lattes every morning, a cappuccino, and I throw it in uh, in just a regular coffee mug. It only fills up about halfway, but it's you know it's good enough for me. I don't have a, a travel espresso mug, but um, yeah. So I have a I have a pretty good experience with uh, the Keurigs and all the other types of machines that people tend to have that are you know fed from a capsule. Um, oh, I'm going to melt that to my stove. So this is the water container. Um, it, it actually drains pretty quickly. So I would say maybe five, uh, five lungos, which is the button on the right hand side. I think it's 120 milliliters and the espresso side is 40 milliliters. So your standard uh, shot of espresso. So it, it, you are, um, I am finding that I'm refilling it quite often, which is, to be honest, it doesn't bother me because the unit is so nice and small. So I'm going to turn this back to its side here. To load up the unit, you just, uh, let's pull this forward here. All you do is you flip this up and you throw one of these cartridges in. Um, and the cartridge itself is much, much smaller than the Tassimo cartridge. So I find that um, it uses obviously a lot less coffee than the Tassimo one. Um, but this is the being the original line Nespresso only makes uh, espresso. Um, so basically, you can make 40 mils or 120 mils of coffee uh, with one of these capsules, and that's it. Okay, so if you want to water it down and make a, an Americano or something, then you can totally do that. And to be honest, it's, it makes it strong enough that you could water it down. I've had I've had about five or six of these different kinds. I haven't had all of them. So like this is the brand new. Uh, uh, Cuban one that I oh, Cuban one that I just got. Uh, it's not real Cuban coffee. I wish it was. It doesn't really matter to me uh, in Canada, but uh, I guess until the Americans lift that trade embargo, they won't be using real Cuban coffee. Okay, uh, and this is actually a Swiss-made product. So all of these are all made in Switzerland, and the unit is made in Switzerland too, I believe. Let's confirm that. actually say. I do believe the unit is made in Switzerland though, so we can, uh, I will put that in the, in the comments uh, if it's not made in Switzerland. So if I move the camera down here, uh, it actually dumps the old cartridges into a container, so that's nice, you don't have to take them out. Uh, you just slide this right out here and the cartridges lay, lie in there. Oh, and it's dripping onto my floor, so I'm just going to dump that. And most of this city's machine, so this is the sort of top end city's machine where it's all metal. Okay, so this is metal. Um, this feels like it's plastic. This is metal. This is metal. So parts on the machine are metal and some of them are still plastic. Um, I don't think that has any effect on the performance of the machine. It just, you know, it's just a looks and, and sort of I know my machine is metal and not made of cheap plastic type of thing. So um, if you don't want to spend the $300 that this machine costs, with the with the frother, I recommend you get the frother anyway. So this is fifty bucks. So three hundred dollars for this machine. 
then you can go with an all plastic unit. The Pixie is a much smaller one. I'm, uh, they all do 19 bars of pressure. I'm confident that they all make the same cup of coffee, so it's not really an issue. Okay, so let's turn this on here. It, there's only two buttons on the unit. It's got an auto off. Uh, so you don't have to worry about turning it on and off. Um, it's just plugged in. You push one of the buttons to wake it up. It's going to flash. And then when it's done flashing, it's ready to make a cup of coffee or uh, some espresso. Now, I'm going to make a demo. I wish I had a glass that I could use that uh, would show this off because... I want to make a full, full unit, full, sorry, full latte here. Um, let's do this. Is this going to fit? No. Okay, we'll just do a short one. Okay. So, when I, I just open this straight up, pretty straightforward, and then um, I'm going to take this red capsule, this is... Uh, decaf. It's called uh, decaffeinado. Decaffeinado. All the names of the coffee are are in a different language, um, so you're gonna have to sort of remember those names. And actually, they have pretty good descriptions. So, like how you would how you would talk to a coffee connoisseur about um, how things taste. It talks about the bouquet, and it talks about all the different flavors on the palate when you taste the coffee so um, you don't have to worry about you know getting all your information from the name this is a really high-end uh, presentation and they they really care about their product um, I'm gonna show you how this makes a cup of coffee let's lower this down I'm just gonna push the right hand side button so that you can see how it makes a cup of coffee now you notice that I've I've made a lot of espresso using proper machines, and this is a really good-looking cup of espresso, at least from my, in my opinion. Uh, it's got the perfect amount of crema, and uh, it's, it's just a really good cup of coffee. And it's, uh, it uses all the, the 19 bars of pressure and what you're supposed to use for making, uh, making espresso. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a really nice um, lungo here and a really nice amount of crema on top. That looks really yummy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's raise you up and I'm going to show you how the milk frother works. Okay, so let's put this off to the side. Notice how it just dropped in there. So let's pull the milk frother. This is the base and this is the unit itself. It's just got a little bit of a... <clears throat> it's got a whisk in there and I imagine that the whisk is just it just heats up as it spins um, you do have to give it a little bit of a scrub afterwards because it, it sort of can um, milk I think sort of burns onto the it's not it doesn't actually burn it sort of just dries onto the inside because of the heat so I'm just gonna pour this in to just so that just so that the black part on top is barely visible. That's just usually how much milk I use. Just regular um, 2%, sorry, 1% milk. It doesn't matter, whatever you want to use, skim milk. And then um, you can either put the lid on. For this amount of milk, you don't need to put the lid on. And that's for 1% milk. So I, I don't know if there's a, if you know higher fat contents cause um, more foam to cap in, to, sorry, to, to form, so I use your best judgment with that. So you push it, and it starts spinning. You notice it starts frothing right away, because it's less and less of it's becoming visible. And it's going to stop actually on its own once the milk gets to temperature. Whoa. I apologize for the shaking screen. It's the uh, image stabilization working its magic. So again, 
This is a beautiful cup of coffee. I'm not by any means uh, an expert when it comes to um, drinking espresso and cappuccinos and stuff. I, I know a fair amount, but by all means, I would not consider myself an expert. And for those people who are, uh, who are like solid purists, you may not like this regardless. Even though it makes an amazing cup of coffee, you may just want to use the standard thing because you're a dinosaur. That's okay. Or you really like, you know, I'm not saying it makes a qual like a cup of coffee like a $20,000 machine. But the problem with, uh, the problem with my machines in the past was that they weren't like industrial sized machines. So making multiple cups for my guests, say four or five people, wasn't uh, a pleasure because I'm constantly having to re-tamp coffee, clean out the whole machine. It, it takes me probably 20 minutes to make four cups. And I know that some of you are going to chime in and say, oh, I can make 25 cups of coffee in 10 seconds. Well, I can't do that because I'm not magic. So I, I didn't really take much care into doing that, but I scooped some foam on top and I think it looks really good. So I'm going to have a taste and uh, give you the taste test. The decaf is um, is pretty basic. There's three kinds of decaf. And I don't have the list here. There's three kinds of decaf, I know that. This one, from what I understand, has the sort of the most basic taste. Uh, it's really good. There's no, it doesn't taste stale. It tastes like, you know, a good cup of coffee. And this is probably a, a four or five out of, on their scale. I originally thought that their scale goes up to um, 10 in terms of uh, strength. But then I went on to, and saw this limited edition Cuban stuff and it's a 14. So that's a four, this is a 14. So I'm about to find out tomorrow uh, what this Cuban coffee, uh, sorry, this Cuban wannabe coffee tastes like because I, I have no idea what their scale goes up to. I guess they just go, oh, this one is, um, you know, more strong than this one. So we're going to go 17 and they may go up and up and up and up and up or the scale may be out of 15 or 20. I have no idea what the scale is out of, to be honest. My favorite, what you guys may be interested in is that they have some flavored stuff. This one is a, a caramel infused. And I know that some people are like, oh, I hate flavored coffee. And, and you know what? I would have agreed with you prior to having this because flavored coffee can have sort of a chemical taste. Whereas this actually is a, is a very, very subtle caramel taste in the background. And I think you should really try this one. They have, the vanil they have vanilla, caramel, and chocolate. And all three of them are, are fantastic. And I think that they're uh, characterized by... Let me see if I can find the vanilla. Just to confirm, I may have already had drank it. Yeah. So the vanilla and the caramel and the chocolate are all characterized by swirlies on the side. If you see that little design on them, uh, whereas the normal colors ha are just a, uh, they have actually a little bit of a vertical pattern on them. So this one's got swirlies. The vanilla is white with brownish swirlies, and the chocolate I don't believe I have. The chocolate. So I couldn't tell you what color chocolate swirlies it has. That's my guess is that they're all swirlies and that's what it that's what signifies the caramel. But honestly the caramel flavor is awesome. It's very subtle just in the background sort of as an aftertaste. It's not like a f sugary flavor shot that you can get in your coffee at like Starbucks or something. Um, I would really, really encourage you to try that. And when you get the machine, you actually get 16 um, samples. So most of the sam the coffee you see in this dish is a sample. I only have, I only bought three kinds. I bought two boxes of the uh, caramel, which goes to show how much I like it. One of the decaf because I like to have coffee in the evening sometimes, just because of the taste. So I don't want to um, have too much caffeine. And just a regular blonde roast. So yeah, that's that's. That's the Nespresso um, Cities machine, and, and in general, you can sort of use this as a review for all Nespresso stuff. Um, it's really high quality, makes an amazing cup of coffee. The cost 
is actually very reasonable considering what you pay for like a Keurig. The typical cost of a Keurig, a cup of coffee, you can get, if you buy them in bulk, you get them for about 60 to 66, 70 cents per cartridge. Um, and you, whoop, for basic coffee, on the Nespresso site, uh, which is the only place you can buy these, there is no store that sells these, only a few boutiques, and I know of one in Manhattan that uh, is just an espresso boutique, but anyways, that's beside the point. About 70 to 80 cents per cup, which is not bad for the quality of coffee you're getting here. This is like grade double A or triple A coffee, um, fair trade and all kinds of stuff. Go look on their website for all the details on the coffee, but uh, it's, it's about as high quality a cup of coffee that you can get. Um, and if you're just buying regular espresso from the supermarket, this stuff is way better. It makes a, a way better cup of coffee, even if you were making it with a fancy machine. It's all about the good quality beans that they use, um, and, and the flavor really reflects that. I'm going to do a brief talk about the Nespresso Cities uh, machine in uh, Chrome. Uh, obviously it's Chrome. Uh, this is the one of many Nespresso original line machines um, and I figured I would do a brief sort of review. I've been using this machine for you know, a solid week and a half-ish and I, I feel like I'm pretty confident in, in, uh, in using it. So I'm just going to show you from the side here. This machine is actually a pretty nice and narrow machine. You can squeeze it sort of anywhere on your counter. Um, I've used Keurigs and I've had uh, a real espresso machine, um, the double boiler uh, version of uh, from oh geez, Breville, the Breville double boiler. So that's I don't know a seven hundred, eight hundred dollar machine. So I have some experience making espresso uh, in a in a regular espresso machine. I've used the Tassimo, which is a fairly common unit. That you know what I'm not going to drag it out of the counter. Where the Nespresso, sorry, the um, Tassimo takes uh, cartridges, cups that sort of look like these. This is second cup uh, coffee. So this is what a coffee cartridge looks like. Um, this doesn't actually make coffee. Um, you can make lungos and you can make <coughs> espressos, but to be honest, I just make um, I make lattes every morning, a cappuccino. 